Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Kalpathuru Projects International Limited Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Dam Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital Advisors. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Yeah, um, good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to the Q3 FI24 earnings call. Okay, internationally. We have the management today being represented by Mr. Manish Manot, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. S.K. Tripathi, Deputy Managing Director, Mr. Amit Uplainshwar, Director Group Strategy, and Mr. Ram Patodia, President Finance and CFO. At this point, I'll hand over the floor to Mr. Manot for his initial remarks, post which we'll open up the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Bhumika. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Q3 FY24 earnings call of Kalpatru Projects International Limited. I will start with the key highlights of our performance for the quarter, then follow that up with updates for each of our business verticals. The current financial year is pivotal year for us, as it has set the tone and foundation for robust performance for the merged entity. We have reported a strong quarter with console revenue growth of 22%, EBITDA growth of 13% and PAD growth of 32%. So in Q324, our standalone revenue is up by 18%, EBITDA grows by 13% and PAD sees a whopping 30% growth. The growth is largely in back of improved execution and healthy order backlog position. We have seen a good inflow of high value orders during the year as we have successfully forayed in underground tunneling with one project in Kanpur Underground Metro and additional L1 in Bhopal Underground Metro. Further, we have also secured the largest BNF order for a constructing 30, around 13 million square feet of residential building project on design built basis. We are also favorably placed in a large airport EPC project in India. In addition to this, marquee projects wins, we continue to strengthen our presence in TND business in India and overseas markets. All these orders will help us to solidify our market position and capabilities going forward. On back of this large order wins, our order book has had a record high of Rs. 51,753 crores. Our order inflows, including L1 of 6,000 crores, stands at over Rs. 24,000 crores for the current year. With this, we have almost achieved 95% of our targeted order inflows for the full year 24. Our console EBITDA margin is at 8.7% and the standalone EBITDA, EBITDA margin is at 8.3% in Q324. Our EBITDA margin is in line with project mix and reflects our consistent effort towards capability building and resource augmentation in order to support future growth. Our debt and working capital in our core EPC business continue to remain aligned with revenue growth and business mix. Our net debt in our core EPC business stands at Rs. 2,784 crores, with working capital days at 112 at the end of Q3, compared to 117 days for a similar period last year. Our finance cost as a percentage of sales remains stable at around 2% at a standalone level. We expect net working capital days of around 100 days by the year end as we move closer to the financial year. Coming now to our business verticals. Beginning with the TND business, our TND business performed exceptionally well with revenue growth of 30% in Q3. The growth is driven by robust project progress and healthy order backlog. The TND business witnessed a renewed optimism backed by rising adoption of renewables, increasing demand for power and need for upgradation of TND infrastructure. The TND segment is set for multi-year growth with robust center pipeline in India and international market. We have secured orders of around Rs. 7,500 crores till date in our TND business and additionally have an L1 of over Rs. 3,000 crores. The majority of L1 orders in TND business are from India. Our TND order book stands at Rs. 19,367 crores at the end of December 23. 
On the international substitute front, in LMG Sweden, we have reported revenue of rupees 237 crores in Q3 and 664 crores for nine months financial year 24. LMG's order book at the end of December 23 stands at around rupees 2100 crores. LMG has also successfully improved its capabilities in the substation business and improves its market presence by addition of new clients. In Brazil, faster revenue reached rupees 560 crores for nine months 23 with a YOI growth of 77%. We continue to focus on organization of strengthening and closure of existing projects. Fasters order book stands at rupees 435 crores and additionally they have L1 of around 300 crores. We expect that END business to deliver good and sustainable growth going, profit, going forward. Moving to our buildings and factories business, the business reported growth of 9% YOY in Q3. During Q3, progress on a few projects, especially in Chennai area, were impacted given by heavy rains. We expected to improve our revenue in Q4. Our BNF business continues to witness robust, robust order, ordering momentum as we have secured orders totaling around Rs. 6,450 crores, resulting in a closing order book of over Rs. 12,000 crores. We continue to improve our competitive position and capabilities in the BNF business as we have secured large size design build building projects and improved presence in airport, data centers and industrial projects. The business outlook in the BNF segments looks very promising across residential, commercial and institutional buildings. Additionally, emerging areas like data centers, airports and industrial plants also present a good opportunity for future growth. Our water business has achieved strong growth in the revenue by revenue growth of 52% in Q3, led by healthy project execution of water supply projects. Our order book stands at around Rs. 11,400 crores at the end of December 23. The business outlook in water supply, irrigation and water treatment projects remain very strong and ordering activity is expected to pick up getting into next year. In our railways business, we continue to focus on project closure and selective order booking given increase in competitive intensity. Our revenue for Q3 is Rs. 281 crores and closing order book stands at Rs. 3,750 crores. In our oil and gas business, we have achieved revenue of rupees 200 crores in Q3, a figure close to the same quarter last year, primarily due to the lowering order in the domestic market. We are working to expand our international reach in the oil and gas business with focus on MENA region, given the large capital outlay to expand and upgrade the existing hydrocarbon infrastructure in that region. In our urban infra, we reported revenue growth of 130%, the growth is driven by a combination of execution new projects and claim receipts in older projects. We have made a major breakthrough in our urban infra business with two underground metro rail tunnel projects. This will pave way to improve our competitive position and capability to bid for such large projects going forward. Additionally, the recently announced union budget has increased the capital outlay for infra development to over Rs 11 lakh crores. This will lead to enormous opportunities in the urban mobility segment. We are focusing on opportunities in elevated and underground metro rail, expressway, elevated corridors, etc. We believe that urban infra will act as a major contributor in growth going forward. In our road BOT projects, revenue per day has improved to rupees 50 lakhs per day in Q3 as compared to 52.6 lakhs same quarter last year. Similarly, for nine months of FY24, revenue of road boot projects has improved to rupees 57 lakhs per day compared to rupees 53 lakhs of similar period last year. The growth in revenue is largely driven by increase in traffic. We have infused around rupees 59 crores in the first nine months of FY24, largely towards repay repayment of debt. For our indoor real estate project, till date, we have completed sale of around 70% of the inventory. In the current financial year, we have collected rupees 43 crores from the project. We are awaiting clarity on TDR and FSI policy, which in turn will determine the development of additional built-up area and the balance proceeds to be collected from this project. However, we remain committed to complete and close the project by end December 24. On the outlook front, the business environment remains very optimistic with large capital outlay and spend on infrastructure development in India and select international markets. In this backdrop, our diversified business mix, proven competencies, 
and strong financial pro uh, profile give us enormous flexibility to be selective and focus on opportunities that align with our ethos of profitable growth and improving and maintaining the strength of our balance sheet. We continue to target consolidated revenue growth in the range of 20 to 25 percent and PBT of around 4 and a half to 5 percent for full year 24. With this, I would request the moderator to open the lines for Q&A. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to check on your revenue guidance. You're giving 20 to 25 percent and some different, you know, uh, real estate revenue. But, you know, what gives us confidence? Because first nine months, we are only at 19 percent, you know, to sort of reach or will we be at the lower end because of the 20 percent? How do we look at that? Maybe that's my first question. Uh, good morning, Deepak. People, typically Q4 revenue for our businesses are extremely high. And given the order book visibility, we believe that our Q4 growth itself should be in excess of 25%. Now, if Q4 growth is in excess of 25%, we could be anywhere in the range of 21, 22% on an annualized basis. As of today, looking at the January numbers also, we are pretty confident of, of reaching those numbers, uh, subject to anything, you know, uh, unusual which happens in the next two months. Uh, if you look at historically also, typically Q4 is always 30 to 30% 30 plus of our revenue, and that's what similarly we expect in the current year also. Uh, sure, and uh, maybe just on the order backlog and the, the you know outer year outlook, with the you know how how do we look at the execution timeline for the fifty one thousand crores? Should we look at like a standard two plus years, or you know because if it's shifting more towards T and D, the execution can also be faster. And this may be related to that as uh, you know T and D prospects increase, should the margin profile also you know go back. Or towards the last couple of years levels, how do we look at both margin and revenue from a medium term perspective? So, so from a revenue growth perspective, Deepak, it's very different for each of our segments, right? So typically when I look at the TND segment, uh, you know, typical order book is two and a half to three years. It's not beyond that. When I look at water, it's typical order book execution cycle is two to two and a half years. Similarly, building and factories is more in the range of two and a half years. So if you ask me from a profile of order book, there's hardly less than 20% order book, which would be more than three years. Everything else has to be delivered in the next uh, two to three years. So, and that's why, you know, we're pretty confident of growth going forward also. Uh, as far as margin profile is concerned, uh, obviously margins are, should be continuously improving given the increased uh, size in revenue, uh, given the optimism which will come in overheads and, and interest cost. Uh, and that's what is visible in the current year also when you look at on a quarterly basis. We believe that this trend should continue getting into next year also, but we'll be able to quantify it maybe by the end of Q4 or, or beginning of Q1 next year. Mm. Uh, sure, so good for my question. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HCFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, Manish Ji. Uh, congratulations on a good quarter, sir. So my question, first question is on uh, uh, this GMC. So uh, the intent of the merger was also to take GMC International. So so if you can highlight post-merger, what kind of order wins or what kind of total addressable market opportunity have we uh, seen and how much of that has been converted. So if you can give some sense uh, uh, on how the time has increased uh, for us beyond t and in the international market and going ahead, how do you see this panning out? Good morning, Parikshit. Um, Parikshit, uh, yes, you are right. One of our intent of merging the two entities was to take all our non-transmission business segments on the international front. We continue to explore those opportunities in roads, in building and factories, as well as in oil and gas. 
If you go back to our order book, roads, we already had a couple of very large wins in the previous year where we are focused on delivering. In the current year, we got into specials on a large building and uh, factories project in which we are executing. We are already executing two large projects in Maldives while we speak. We are further strengthening our capabilities and competencies in some more geographies as far as building and factories and roads are concerned. So parallelly, we continue to explore opportunities not only in these two segments but even oil and gas. So we have already uh, created several inroads by qualification in a lot of uh, segments in a lot of countries. My own belief is that as early as Q4, you will see some large wins coming in, in at least some segments which are non TND in the international front. Uh, we will continue to focus on a lot more segments going forward in the next year. But it's, just, it's also very important for us to realize that some of our segments are very capex intensive. Right? So when I look at a building and factory segments, when I go international, they're very capex intensive as compared to let's say a TND or oil and gas segment. We also would like to balance that while we look at growth on the international market. So while we are, our vision is clear, we are pouring into all of this, but the speed is at different levels depending upon the opportunity, depending upon the capex mix, and depending upon the maturity of the markets. Okay, sure, sir. So my second question is on the subsidies, these entities, international entities, Fastel, and Jivantaj, uh, and even CISO of Logistics. So if you can help us with their nine-month performance, and like how much should have been profit or losses in these entities? Sure. So, uh, you know, I think we have this data already in our, in our uh, you know, uh, presentation, which is on the website, but I'll give it to you again. On a nine-month basis, if you look at Fastel, uh, they have done revenue of around 664 crores with the PITA of uh, 21 crores and uh, PBT of 11 crores. Uh, uh, Linje Montage, sorry, that is Linje Montage at a Sweden level, 664 crores, a PITA of 21 crores and PBT of 11 crores. If I look at uh, Fastel, they have done a... Uh, 560 crores revenue with the EBITDA of just 1 crores and, and negative PBT of 35 crores. Uh, negative PBT had a large you know, amount of a bank guarantee encashment which happened in Q2 uh, of around 18 odd crores. Uh, as I said earlier, we expect Fastel to get into that break even level at a PBT level itself getting into next year. And Linje Munta should be doing much better given that they have very good visible order book and they have fallen into new segments with new clients. And uh, Shishubham? At the Shubham level, uh, we have done 81 crores revenue for 9 months uh, with a bit of 17 crores and a negative of uh, 10 crores. Very similar to what they did in the previous year, 9 months. Okay. And just uh, last question around this uh, pledges and the promoter share holding. So, if you can give us some sense, uh, have the banks or the lending institutions uh, brought in some covenants on how these will behave or is there any embargo on these that uh, the pledges will be capped, the promoter share holding should not go below certain levels, if you can just refresh us on that. So there are no specific covenants in terms of, you know, uh, saying that what should be the promoter holding or pledge, but yes, there's a, you know, a kind of a discussion which has happened where the promoters have promised that one, uh, pledge will go below 40% and while we speak, we're already at closer to uh, 39 or 38 percent, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. So that's the understanding. The pledge has been reducing every quarter. Even the last month we saw a reduction of closer to 2 percent on pledge. So uh, the underlying commitment from the promoters is a pledge will not go up, whatever happens, and they don't intend to sell any more of the stake. Uh, those are the two underlying promoters, a kind of verbal things. It's not something in a return kind of uh, note with bankers. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Those were my questions. Thank you and wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Gaurav from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, am I, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, Gaurav. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. So, sir, as we are phasing out uh, in our election, uh, phasing in an election year, so how do we see our closing order book for the year and what could be our order inflows for 4Q and uh, 1Q25 if you could just highlight some of the points on that part. And specific segment like which are the segments which are, we are seeing traction because railways have been sort of muted for us for quarter two now. So, Gaurav, uh, as I said earlier, we expect all our L1 orders to uh, get converted to order book in Q4. 
which means that we should be getting orders in excess of 6,000 crores in Q4. Uh, you know, and with revenues of similar numbers, we should be ending the year with an order book of around 52, 53,000 crores or in that range. Uh, as far as Q1 is concerned, it would be early for me to comment on that because typically, you know, during election quarter, you might see some slowdown in a few sectors, but not, it might not be across the board. So when I look at the international order book, there'll be no impact. Whether I look at the BNF private sector, there'll be no impact. Whether I look at orders from the central PSUs, whether it's power grid, IOCL, Gale, any of them, there shouldn't be any impact. Uh, difficult for me to quantify at this stage, the, you know, the Q1 likely order inflow or the impact. Uh, but at the year end, we expect order book to stay at the range of 50 to 53,000 crores. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, next question is basically on the margin. So we have seen a, a marginal improvement in the margin in the 3Q2, around 8.3% on the beta level. So, sir, how uh, do we see like trajectory going forward, and which seg segments are uh, who are contributing to the margins for betterment of margins uh, in the coming quarters, or are we seeing any sort of improvement in FY25 also for this level from this point in level? So, I think we we continue to be uh, you know uh, being on our estimates of PBT in the range of four and a half to five percent, and we stick to that stand what we had given at the beginning of the year. Uh, we believe that that is what we is achievable on an annualized basis in the current year. Getting into next year, we definitely believe there will be improvement in margins, but the exact quantification I'll be able to do, you know, at the end of the Q4 call because all the business plans are being done now. Uh, but clearly, a visible improvement should be seen at the PBT level. Yes, sir. And sir, could you just highlight on like what sort of order inflows we expect in railways uh, from FY25 uh, because. <laughs> there has been some slowdown from a quarter to now. So you can just highlight on the railway part, like how how are we seeing this on on the order and flow front? Sure. So uh, you know, on the railway segment, uh, while there are a lot of tenders which are coming out, the competition has become very very intense. On an average, we are seeing 15, 16, 18, 20 players also bidding. We've been very conscious of not going the order book by compromising on profits. We already have a very good order book there and our focus there is more on delivery and closure of projects. Personally, I do not see that segment being very bullish into next year, uh, similar to let's say uh, some of our other segments where I am very bullish. The focus on railways even next year would be uh, take specific targeted projects and make sure that you know you focus on delivering on existing projects and closure of existing projects. While we say so, on the international front, there are three or four countries where we have now got qualified for railway projects also. We will continue to pursue that, uh, but you know, typically international projects takes their own duration of conversion, but that will also be an additional focus for us as far as railways business is concerned. Okay, sir. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bharat Seed from Quest Investment Advisors. Private Limited, please go ahead. Hi, good morning, Manishji, and congratulations on good delivery. Good Hello. morning, Manishji. Manishji, I have two questions. One is on this, uh, we are seeing a big opportunity in coming five years for India as well as internationally. And what we have been uh, getting feeling that execution is becoming challenge and particularly skill uh, labor force availability. So what are our strategy to improve that as to in order to execute within a timeline and no cost overrun? So what is our strategy and what are, how are we going to meet those challenges? So Bharat Bhai, uh, I think you, you, are, you, have, you are exactly uh, brought out our biggest challenge going into future. Uh, yes, you are right. Availability of labor uh, and resources, not only labor, resources across the entire segments is a challenge today. We are seeing attrition in the rate of 15 to 20 percent over the last two years across all our businesses, you know, which was not Correct. there the last five years. Uh, our focus is very different. Our focus is, you know, uh, we are trying to create a strong workforce with assurance over the next 12, 24 months in terms of giving them work irrespective of monsoon, irrespective of any other segment. So one, we're trying to source in people which are more long-term in nature, whether at a subcontractor level or at a labor level. Right. Second, on the international front, we're trying to bring in people not only from the Indian uh, segment, but also neighboring countries to India. 
so there okay. are a lot of resources available in neighboring countries which are very good which are equipped and they have been now used for a lot of our international projects okay so uh, there's a lot more focus on training and skill development okay uh, over the last one year we have we have done more than 2500 people we have been trained on various aspects of you know skill development or any of those so that's the third focus on making sure that we train as many people i know all of them we can't retain but but you know whatever we can retain is good for us correct okay. will be a challenge and this will be a challenge given the election uh, you know euphoria also and primarily in the month of april and may but as an organization will try and make sure that at least we focus on doing as much till march and then april may uh, make sure that labor intensive projects are not so much in focus correct sir can you add it to that i mean how much are automation can really improve our efficiency or and what are we doing in the for next couple of three four years or five years timeline so but the automation will play a big role across all our segments um, as of now today if you look at it what we have done over the last 3 years you know and will continue to build on that is on various aspects one i could start with utilization of drones across all our businesses whether it is on survey whether it is on stringing whether it is on project monitoring all of that okay. second you, you know utilizing means using shuttering and staging at at a very advanced level means today 90% of projects we work on aluminum shuttering where the cycle time comes down to 7 to 8 days compared to a normal 15 to 20 days of normal shuttering uh third if i if you look at on the welding front in oil and gas and water and all of that we are using automatic welders more than manual fourth if you look at urban infra our focus is a lot more on on the newer machinery newer equipment whether it's on pbm or any of that where productivity would be very different so across all segments right from utilizing of uh, ai tools to utilizing things at the site there is a continuous improvement that will continue to be our focus and if you look at our fixed assets you know last 3 years you see that we have invested closer to 1000 crores in fixed assets whether in the okay. form of shuttering plant and machinery or investment in any of the new things and that is visible in our profitability also compared to any of our industry players you see that we have been much higher even on such a large scale because all this automation is helping us improve our productivity okay and last question is on about the working capital or borrowing See, it is not. I mean, uh, at the desire level, which you are known, typically is always giving a bringing down to below 95 days. So it's still high. So how do we really want? Because in future also for higher growth on higher base will require a lot of working capital. So how are we going to bring down overall borrowing or remaining at the current level? So, first, my uh, as I mentioned in my opening speech, we are targeting closer to 100 days of working capital by end of Q4. Correct. Typically, Q2 and Q3 working capital goes up. That's the typical nature of our business. If you see last year also, Q3 it was 117 days. Q4 we came down to below 100. Right. That's our target in the current quarter also, and the team is aligned in working towards it. That is as far as working capital is concerned. As far as you know, uh, focusing on debt, I think you know a lot of focus continues on on getting rid of some of our non core assets or or divesting some of our non core assets so whether it is indoor where we expect closer to 150 or close to come 150 to 200 close to come in the next 6 to 9 months also our infusion in in all our non core sectors has reduced significantly you know if you look at infusion so that will also help us in bringing in working capital we also continue to focus on divesting one of our large old asset uh, the mandate is already given and we continue to speak to people to look at those options So with all of that, I think debt we will be able to easily manage, and our internal target on working capital is to keep it below 100 days on an annualized basis. Quarter on quarter, sometimes you know things could be very different. Okay, thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Dhruv Agarwal from Nivesha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. good morning, sir. So congratulations on the very good set of numbers, sir. So just wanted to understand your view on T and D segment on like domestic on an international front. What kind of traction do you see in next two to three years, excluding the current order book that you have, and like where is the higher margins like on international orders or like on uh, domestic orders, sir? Uh, good morning, Guru. Uh, okay, I, we have seen uh, the traction on T and D change significantly in the last six months in the domestic market. 
if you go back to my own calls over the last two three years, we have been very very you know subdued on on growth in domestic T and D. Last six months, we have seen huge orders being planned by RDC and PFC uh, on on the entire renewable integration, whether it is in uh, Western India, Northern India, or or even in some pockets of Southern India, and the new regions uh, which was expected to come in soon, whether it is the Northeast or or the North. Uh, we've already seen orders of closer to 40,000 crores uh, being highlighted by RSC PFC for bidding in the next three to four months, uh, which is you know closer to three times of what we have seen in the last uh, couple of years. So with this, I believe that at least the TND segment for the next two to three years uh, clearly looks like an opportunity uh, where we would have a big advantage. On the international front, um, you know, our focus continues to be in, in more in Africa and Latin, even with some focus on Middle East. We are now seeing funding agencies coming back in Africa on majority of the countries. You know, all these funding agencies during COVID had a different view on some of these countries given the revenue shortfall in those countries. But now, lastly, last three to six months, we have seen a lot of tenders coming up in a few markets, primarily Latin and, and Africa, where international agencies are coming back. Given the thrust of, of funding by international agencies, we expect that international markets also should do well. Uh, as far as profitability is concerned, I think, you know, uh, whether it's domestic or international, we continue to be working at, at a similar level of profitability, which is at 9 to 10% or 9 to 11% at a beta level and 5 to 6% at a PBT level. Okay. Uh, like one more sir, question related to that only. Like sir, do you see any competitor on the international order sir? Like on international front? So we we do see competition in various uh, countries across the globe. It's very different in different countries. In MENA typically it's Indian and, and the local uh, Middle East players. When you go to Latin America it was Spanish players, Indians and a few global players. Uh, when you go to Africa, it's primarily Chinese and Indian. Yes, competition continues to be water test, but given that we've been in this market, some of these markets for 10, 15 years, you clearly have an advantage in terms of the labor force, the the you know the knowledge of the geography and region and the cost uh, But competition continues to be what it was in the past. We've not seen as intense competition as in railways. So it's not like we have 20, 25 players. We'll have six, seven, eight players on all projects, whether it is domestic or international. Okay. All right, sir. So, like, while executing the orders on CND segment, what is the biggest challenge that you see, sir? So I think uh, the challenge is different in domestic and overseas markets. I think the domestic markets, the challenge continues to be on approvals, whether it's on right-of-way, whether it's on environment and forest clearances which are happening much faster compared to the past, but those challenges continue to be, uh, you know, delaying projects on the domestic front. On the international project, the challenges are more, you know, the larger framework like the Red Sea issue where trade gets impacted or, you know, any uh, unexpected event which happens everywhere. Uh, while we protect ourselves through ETGC cover and all of that, but challenges are very different depending upon the country and depending upon the project. Okay. So just last one question, sir. The, like sir, the CAE has increased the investment for deploying transmission infrastructure, including transmission lines, substation, to rupees 4.75 trillion from like 4, 2.44 lakh crore previously. So can you give some color on like how do you see the demand to roll out from this increased expenditure and what kind of market share can Kalpatru be able to attain from this and what kind of the margins you can expect, sir? So on the TND front, typically in the domestic market, we've been into that range of 15 to 20% market share in the last 10 to 15 years. You know, a few years could be a plus or minus. And I believe that we should be in that space as far as the TND space is concerned going forward. Uh, on your on your question on the huge expand, you know, uh, expansion which is being planned, that that's exactly what I said earlier, that next two, three years, we will see a huge growth in the TND segment and uh, we will have to just make sure that uh, the supply chain does not get locked up and, and labor resources are available to deliver. As far as margins I said earlier, we continue to be bidding in that range of 9 to 10% EBITDA with 5 to 6% at a PBT level. Okay, so like my understanding is correct, like 4.75 from like 4.75 trillion, you will be able to attain 15 to 20% of market share, right sir? Yeah, over the next 3 to 5 years, this is not numbers which is happening in one year. 
ஓகே சரி டாக்டர் थैंक यू सो मच सर एंड ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर द फ्यूचर सर थैंक यू थैंक यू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ वैभव शाह फ्रॉम जीएम फाइनेंशियल लिमिटेड प्लीज गो अहेड या थैंक यू सर सर वन क्लेरिफिकेशन और गाइडेंस ऑन द रेवेन्यू साइड एंड द पीबीडी मार्जिन साइड इट्स ऑन स्टैंड अलोन लेवल राइट Yes, yes. Our guidance is more at a standalone level of growth of 20 to 25 percent in Q4, and PBT in the range of 4 and a half to 5 percent. Okay. But you know, uh, very important to understand a lot of our core transmission projects also now get into consol. So slowly getting into looking at the long term, you have to start looking at consol numbers. So if you look at Q3 also, there's closer to 250 crores of revenue in consol numbers, which comes from Saudi, which comes from Tunisia, which is all through a subsidiary route. So I think going forward, it's important for us to look at the consol numbers because now majority of numbers are core business. You know, the road SPVs or uh, you know, Shubham is hardly any number. So right now, yes, the guidance is more on a standalone. But going forward, at a consol level, also we will be targeting margins in excess of four and a half percent. Okay. Okay. So secondly, uh, what capex have we done in nine months, and what are our plans for the full year and next year? So our nine months capex has been closer to 200 plus crores. We expect to do um, another 100 plus crores in Q4. Uh, could be slightly more than that. Uh, we have not still finalized our capex plan for next year, but it definitely looks like being higher than the current year. It might be in the range of 400 to 500 crores, given that you know we have put it into underground uh, metro, which also requires some capex. And we're looking at some international projects also in non-TND segment, which might require some capex. So current year we should be in the range of 300 to 350 crores, and getting into next year going to be higher than that. I'll be able to quantify that at the end of Q4 when uh, in my analyst call for Q4. Okay, and sir, lastly on the underground metro opportunity, so we would be bidding in JV with another player, but uh, entire work will be done by us. So I think it's a JV proper JV where work will be done by both the partners and the form uh, in which the JV is devised. Uh, it could be different proportion of work. It would be different segments of work which we would be working on. But it's not that we would be doing the full work. It will be the JV's responsibility, and based on whatever the JV agreement has been signed, we'll be working on that. So particularly in underground projects, we would also be doing the tunneling portion. Yes, we will be doing the tunneling portion for it sure, and we are investing in a TBM machine also, which I said earlier that there would be a capex going in for a TBM machine also. So it could be in the range of fifty to hundred crores, the TBM part for next year. Yeah, sure, it, it could be even more than that. Let's see what what how many projects we win, but uh, definitely in the range of hundred plus crores. Okay, thank you, sir. Those are my questions. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: You may press star and one to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Arfat from Incred. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Right on gate of numbers. So my first question is on a divestment. So uh, say if you play uh, in terms of we divest by the FY20, in order timeline to divest other asset like the seasonal logistics. And also indoor, make it completely out of business. And what are you expecting from all this? So, um, as I mentioned earlier, indoor project we expect to be uh, fully divested by December 24. We have sold off close, close to 70% uh, of our inventory. The balance should be sold off quick, maybe in the next three to six months. By December 24, internally we are planning to be completely out of indoor. As far as road assets is concerned, the largest asset uh, uh, WEPL we have uh, already appointed bankers. WEPL, sorry, uh, we have already appointed bankers, and uh, we are, have a non-binding offer right now on which we are working on. Uh, we believe that in the next three to four months we should get some clarity on that. As far as the other two road assets are concerned, uh, they have a smaller lag life left. You know, if one of them is seven years, one of them is nine to ten years. uh we have not yet looked at uh, divesting them at the current stage but once we have done with the big asset we will look at that also as far as shubham logistics is concerned um, clearly we believe it's non core to us 
but we don't think that divestment would happen in the next 12 to 15 months. That could be something which we would target in 25, 26. Given you know the, the given the situation in that business today, uh, where you know things have to improve significantly, hopefully post elections. So we believe that that diversification could happen only in 25, 26, not before that. Okay, fine. So, and since uh, lastly on your uh, promoting, so if you look at the past few pledges coming down, but what a holding itself is coming down. So, in on that, sir? Sorry, I missed that. Pledge is coming down, but sorry, I missed the second part. Uh, holding. Down. If you look at the promoter holding, is coming down. <clears throat> So I think promoters holding came down, uh, you know, one because of margin and second because something they sold around <coughs> six months ago. There's no movement in the last two, three months. Uh, but we have seen pledge coming down. So uh, there was a further reduction of 2% in January. Now pledge is at around what, 38, 39% levels. So we see continuous reduction in pledge and you should see further reduction happening in the next two months. Um, so I think, you know, we'll only see a downward trajectory on that and, and hopefully a significant downward trajectory going into the next 6 to 12 months. Okay, so fine. That's it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Thomas George, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Manohar. It's uh, good to connect uh, with you and the team again. Uh, just have a query on uh, future incubation of businesses. Do we see any of our businesses within uh, the overall holding of our company being listed either overseas or in India in the very long term? And what is our view on incubation of new businesses at uh, Alpha Flu Projects? Good morning, Thomas. Uh, Thomas, uh, on the first question of uh, you know any of our businesses in the domestic and international front uh, getting into an environment of listing or capital raising, as of now, I do not think we have any such plans, at least for the next few years, whether it is the Swedish entity or the Brazilian entity or any of the others. As far as incubation of new businesses are concerned, uh, we would continue to explore opportunities within the value chain where we exist. So whether it is a transmission value chain or the urban infra or the building and factories or the oil and gas or railways. We will continue to explore opportunities within the value chain, whether it's on manufacturing, whether it is on, let's say, automation, whether it's in investments in, in uh, you know, uh, small in, small uh, players, you know, who are doing excellent work in, in this value chain. Beyond the value chain, beyond the six existing businesses which we have, we do not believe that we need to diversify in the next couple of years, given the huge opportunity in this business spaces. We also are conscious of the fact that any new incubation and diversification requires also huge capital, right? It starts with some infusion of equity, then taking those three, four projects, and then building everything. As of today, at least from a two-year perspective, we believe that the segments where we exist have huge opportunity in domestic and international, and we'll focus on those segments only. Great, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Lashmi Narayan KG from Tunga Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, so first, in terms of your DNF vertical in uh, in India, uh, what has been the order book uh, in the DNF vertical in India? So, if you look at the VNF vertical in India, our order book uh, as of 31st December is around 12,000 plus crores. In the current mm -hmm. year, we have won orders of around 6,500 crores in the VNF vertical. Additionally, uh -huh. we are LVAT and, and some orders. So, our closing order book right now is around 12,100 crores. And this will be executed over a period of what time? So, our typical VNF orders are in the range of two and a half to three years. Uh, so my own view is a significant portion of this order will be delivered in the next two years with some some portion getting into the third year. There's nothing which is beyond three years as of now. And, and, and what are the major wins we have got uh, uh, this, uh, this last nine months? So in the nine, last nine months, uh, as I said earlier, we have had wins in um, industrial in, uh, engineering. We have had wins in a data center. We are L1 in a large airport. We've taken up huge residential projects in southern India, which is on a design-build basis. 
we have got uh, uh, you know a, a couple of education institutes with across residential commercial education data centers airports and industrial uh, projects it's a mix of all of them sorry <laughs> sorry uh is it uh, you know in 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 the places where you have one uh, what has been the uh, what uh, who have been your typical competitors in some of your top two or three wins in terms of sizes the ones which you spoke about data center or uh, uh, or other industrial one um do you find competition from smaller guys or are the are the lnts and the shapujis I think we see competition from everywhere, given on the size of the project. If the project is, let's say, a thousand crore plus, typically it's four or five large guys who come in. If the value is less than 500 crores, you see eight, nine, ten, twelve bidders also. Uh, but the good part is it's healthy competition. We do not see any more people bidding at at you know uh, irrational prices or very low prices. So even if you win or lose, you win or lose with a few percent here and there. and that's positive for the industry as a whole because healthy competition will help all of us do better so and, and i was just uh, glancing through some of these uh, requests of uh, information and i see that uh, there are these stringent conditions these days in terms of continued uh, profitability at a at a pbt level um better network uh, better completion record uh, without any delay is that something um, uh helping you to get more projects where these uh, other uh, uh, switch players uh, lose out uh, in a sense that are you getting uh, is the industry getting consolidated in the dnf in india so i think all the industry players have uh, that credibility of network profitability and and execution so uh, to me at least the large 10 12 15 guys we see them doing extremely well you know which includes us also uh definitely uh, the entire rera mechanism has helped us in the b and f segment at least in the residential mm-hmm. segment where cash flows have improved given that you know uh, the deployment of uh, utilization is governed as per rera regulations so definitely that helps on the cash flow front but as far as competition is concerned i think the the large players or the good players who have been doing well continue to be uh, competitive across all segments got it got it and what's the typical um, uh you know return uh, returns you make what is the kind of roe you make in this segment uh, whether it is uh, above your uh, normal uh, at a, at a, at a consolidated level or it is below the normal uh, below your company average so at the bnf level typically our roce is is uh, slightly higher than let's say some of our other segments like railways and oil and gas it's very similar to tnd more in the range of 16 to 18% Uh, at a pbt level this business uh, clearly does better than some of the other segments but at a pbt level they are back to those uh, 5 to 6% levels and and what is your differentiation in this uh, thing other than your technical capabilities is that something which you bring to a table that others don't uh, bring in because you're sitting on a very good uh, order book there um compared to the revenue run rate you have uh, what is the uh, any any distinct differentiation you have in that segment I think it's a combination of four or five things. Combination of uh, our long relationship with a lot of private sector and delivery over the last ten years in in various aspects of the business. Second, uh, our availability of a huge labor workforce which has worked with us for decades together. Third, our our ability to uh, acquire and retain resources across all levels. Fourth, our design and build capabilities which we have built over the last four to five years. uh fifth our own uh, values in terms of delivery where you know we have delivered on every project and you'll not find a single project which we have not delivered irrespective of covid or increase in steel prices or whatever else so combination of five six things with that reputation of of you know uh delivering on or before time has helped us achieve what we are today okay may uh, please another uh, question or two sure yeah Uh, so in this uh, how much of your projects will be fixed for fixed uh, price project and how much you have some kind of a variable mix in so today if i look at your, the total order book uh, fixed portion projects are around 35% on a total 51000 crores order books you look at it and variable projects are around 65% and this will be true for the bnf segment also so bnf would be different bnf the fixed portion would be more than 90% uh and the variable would be closer to 
sorry i said opposite the variable would be closer to 90% i correct myself and the fixed would be closer to 10% and what last is yeah in terms of uh, the size of this dns right so in the country where would you stand in terms of your either order book or in terms of the size of operation uh, to just get a, get a sense of proportion in terms of where you are uh, Uh, in India, are you not on the top five or in the top three? So we've not done a kind of a benchmarking across with all players, but we personally internally believe that we definitely in all segments where we are today, we are one among top five. All segments, okay. which whether it is C and D, whether it is B and F, whether it is oil and gas, whether it is railway, and now the way we're getting into urban infra, very soon there also will be into that top five over the next few years. Uh, and, and we see that because of rera things are eased up in terms of you know you can construct that the cash flows are secure. Uh, but when it comes to the other uh, PSU or quasi PSU, uh, you know some of this public infrastructure, especially the DNF thing, do you think the ease of doing business and getting the payments have actually considerably improved in the last couple of years? Uh, I mean, how you think about uh, those things? No, I think uh, we've not had challenges on even cash flows from any of the PSUs. um so i don't think that over the last couple of years post the entire covid uh, you know environment even during covid i think the psus helped us a lot uh we do not see any challenge in terms of the large centralized psus at a state level a few states we have had some challenges given you know elections and government change and all of that but it's only a timing issue it's not something which we are worried from a overall long term perspective sorry sorry this is very helpful thank you so much thank you very much Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. Next question is from the line of Anwani Amit from PL Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. My question is on the pipeline. So you mentioned the uh, robust uh, pipeline in TNB domestic uh, uh, by RE RDC PSP of about forty thousand. Just wanted to understand uh, if uh, do you have uh, chalked out what could be the pipeline for next twelve eighteen months, and this forty thousand uh, does it includes any large HVDC order or components, and uh, similarly for international orders also, if you if possible for you to give a color in any major geographies uh, with respect to the uh, TND pipeline for uh, Kalsaru. So I mean. Uh... Have we drawn the exact pipeline from a next 12 to 15 month perspective? My answer would be not getting into details the way we have gone for the first three to six months. The next three to six months is a number which I had given. It includes a few HVDC projects also, which are already there in the PFC RSC list of projects to be bidded. Uh, it could be maybe three months. It could be slightly beyond six months given elections, uh, you know, which could be happen in Q1. uh but that the path which is visible given that the whether it is through the budget outlay or whether it is through the uh power ministry's plan is that next 2 3 years you'll see huge opportunities in the tnd segment so that is clearly visible we've not quantified things beyond the numbers except for the larger plans which are already available on the government website as far as the international market again as i said earlier uh, you know the three markets where we focused on latin south africa and, and middle east traction has improved significantly and growing that business at a 15 to 20% minimum will not be a challenge for the next 2 to 3 years sure sir and uh, my understanding so with respect to non core we'll be able to wind up only uh, indoor uh, this year and the uh, rest of the projects will take at least 2 years No, indoor as well as we should be exiting one of our road assets, the largest one, VPL. So uh, in FY25, is, is this what yeah. we are targeting? Yeah, our internal target definitely is 2425. Great, so thank you. Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Bhumika Nair from Land Capital Advisors for closing comments. Yeah, I would like to thank all the participants and particularly the management for giving us an opportunity to host the call. Um, thank you very much, sir, and wishing you all the very best uh, going ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bhumika. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. On behalf of Dam Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.